Yeah, so uh, my name is Ben Yuri. I work at Harvard Medical School. And uh, some of the most challenging problems in biomedicine require effectively coupling large-scale omics data to biomedical mechanistic knowledge like what you see on the left-hand side. But this has to be done at scale and at a sufficient level of detail capturing what is already known about molecular biology. Uh, our approach to doing that is what we call knowledge assembly, where on the left-hand side we have various inputs, including curated pathway databases, but also the substantial body of scientific literature uh, that is connected through a layer of knowledge assembly to outputs like executable models and mechanistic networks that ultimately can be used to make explanations and predictions. Um, now, in terms of the inputs, um, uh, in our approach, we integrate more than a dozen pathway databases, some well-known ones like Reactome, various exchange formats like Biopex, uh, as well as a number of different NLP systems. So we don't rely on any single NLP approach. We try to integrate as many compatible systems as possible. Uh, and then all these sources generate fragments of extractions of mechanisms uh, that go through a layer of error correction, redundancy resolution, missing information, inference, and so on uh, through knowledge assembly. And the software system with which we implemented this conceptual approach is called Indra, and its software architecture maps is exactly onto the conceptual workflow that I uh, showed on the previous slide, and the software is available at indra.bio. Um, one of the key features is that we can align these fragments of extractions from multiple sources uh, at the mechanism level. You see one example here on the right-hand side where it's a specific ubiquitination process that happens to have been curated in a pathway database, uh, but we can align all the different mentions of this in literature um, uh, in a way that, uh, that it accounts for different types of variability. Uh, and, uh, and links back to specific sentences and specific publications that provide evidence for this relationship. Two notes related to this. One is that um, redundancy happens quite a lot at the level of curated pathway databases as well, and often in complex ways. You see a snippet of uh, different ways the, the, the very canonical interaction by which MAC phosphorylates ERC has been curated uh, in pathway commons from different source databases. You see seven different reaction topologies for the same mechanism here. Uh, so there's quite a bit of variability and, and non-trivial non overlap at the level of pathway databases as well that has to be resolved. And there's a very special type of partial overlap that we see quite a lot across literature and databases that is um, what we call hierarchical refinement, the exact same mechanism being described at different levels of detail. And so Indra can actually automatically recognize these relationships through ontologies and create these kinds of refinement graphs that allow us to then uh, resolve these redundancies. Uh, now, given all the evidence from different extraction systems and curated sources for a given mechanism, we have models to estimate confidence. We call it the belief score. Uh, these can be explicit probability models that actually model the error rates of text mining systems, for instance, to come up with a joint probability of correctness, or machine learned models that rely on a large corpus of curations that we have done internally. We have just released that data set, actually, when we looked at statements and sentences that are supposed to support them and scored whether they are correct or not with respect to the statement uh, and train machine learning models to predict correctness based on that training data. And these models perform fairly well overall. Um, this allows us to do a type of curation that is mechanism centric. So on top you see the, I think the most commonly followed workflow in current curation practice where uh, papers are prioritized, they are individually examined by curators and um, different interactions are extracted from those specific papers that go into a database. Here we have a chance to, to change that approach to be mechanism-centric. Look at what mechanisms have not yet been curated in a given database. Then look at all the evidence supporting that mechanism. You can do this in a ranked way. And then the curator just has to confirm by examining the evidence whether that's correct and then propagate it into a curated database. And uh, on the bottom right, you see one example of a mechanism with listing various pieces of evidence supporting it. Um, one use case we've pursued with Indra is read about half a million publications out there um, and uh, uh, assemble a mechanistic network from that uh, and use that to either extend structured databases or uh, automatically explain large-scale omics data. Um, and we looked at BioGrid to, to, to show how you could uh, extend a curated resource using 
this knowledge assembled corpus. Uh, and the, what I want to highlight is the central panel there where um, you know, the, 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 the dashed line actually shows the belief scores of different statements that were extracted based on the amount and type of evidence supporting them. The blue line is what is already curated in BioGrid, and there's a gap between the two, which means that at any rate of expected correctness, there are gonna be a certain number of statements that have not yet been curated in BioGrid. And so on the bottom right, you see this kind of curation timeline where you might start with the most confident, not yet curated statement. And as you go down the list, you have a very high curation yield because by and large, as you start, you're gonna mostly be curating correct statements that haven't yet been um, uh, curated in the database. And so uh, we identified three types of ways in which text mining can help extend on curated resources, at least three types of ways. One is new interactions that ha haven't been curated at all, so that's pretty straightforward. But also many times you see additional mechanistic detail being found in publications for an existing, as existing curated interaction. So BioGrid might, for instance, have a protein-protein interaction without any additional mechanistic context, but through text mining you might find that one protein actually phosphorylates the other. And the third one, which I think is the most interesting, is additional context for known interactions. So many times, uh, even if an interaction has been curated, um, it often, the evidence only comes from one or two publications. Um, through text mining, you can actually align a much larger number of different contexts in which a given relationship was mentioned. And this is showing one example, CCNK bytes, CDK12, and all the different mesh terms in the different publications that uh, uh, um, where, where evidence for this interaction is available. You can also use the same assembled knowledge to automatically explain large-scale omics data. Um, in this example, we created explanations for cancer dependency map gene-gene interactions. And the interesting thing that you see here is that uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a separation between database only versus all curves. So there's additional value from text mining coming in. So uh, everything I mentioned is available through multiple interfaces. Two that I wanted to highlight is the Indra database, db.indra.bio, where you can query for these Indra statements with their evidences, and a knowledge graph that's available at discovery.indra.bio, both through um, <clears throat> web-based interfaces and APIs. So I wanted to thank the team and uh, funding that helped produce this work. Reputation? Yeah, yeah, so, so you do see quite a lot of uh, conflict across, across different sources, and uh, using Indra, what you can do is you can discover that there are these evidences supporting uh, uh, one argument and the other supporting the opposite, and it's not, uh, we only resolve those for specific applications, uh, and at the level of the database itself, both of those are in there. Please go ahead. Uh, like the scientific merits of the original publication? Well, and uh, whether, the, whether the, the, what have you believe that they show? Yeah, no, that's well, a good question. That's uh, credibility yeah. and reproducibility yeah. of that as a mechanistic statistic. Yeah, no, good question. So, so first of all, uh, one of the main things that this attempts to solve is technical sources of error from text mining that produces errors. So that's the scientific merit isn't directly solved by the system. However, indirectly, there are ways you can look at it. So you can look at metadata associated with the publications that support the evidence, the timeline of publications uh, and their refutal. And, uh, and also, um, through modeling, I didn't show much about that, but through modeling, you can often find which assumptions are actually consistent with a particular data set in the context of a model, and that allows you to weed out certain incorrect information from a scientific sense. Uh, hi, Ben. So I, I have a question for the, for the three classes of interactions that you were talking about. Uh, would you consider a fourth one, like in a given context, interaction between A and B does not happen? Ah, uh, 
Yeah, uh, so, so there are, there, you know, text managers do sometimes extract explicit negative statements about things, and those are, those do propagate into the system, but they are actually not all that common, so it's like, it's not something that I would highlight as a major contribution, because simply because uh, those statements are less common, probably less reliably extracted, and so on. Um, so there's some of that in there, but I don't think it's been like systematically made part of a useful workflow at this point. It's a good idea, though. Yeah. 